Thanks for that great introduction, Leslie. It's great to be here. Looks like we have a bit of a Minnesota sandwich lined up today with uh, myself speaking first, Stephanie in the middle, and then Melissa from University of Minnesota as well, the other bread in this sandwich. So today is all about weed seeds and manure and managing that. And I'm excited about that topic. I'm excited to be here because I approach the uh, manure world kind of from a crop side. I have a crops background. I work mostly with manure nutrient management. And so coming at this with kind of an agronomy focus. So this is a perfect topic for me, right? Weed seeds in manure, perfect for me. Um, with that, I want to mention the caveat that though I do have a crops background and I come from the crops world, I'm not a weed scientist. Don't ask me about herbicide mode of actions because I will, I will disappoint you. Okay, so why do we even care about weed seeds and manure? So let's back up, look at this from, you know, 30,000 feet. You know, you spread the manure that are, that's contaminated with weed seeds and you end up with weed fields. And weeds that are prolific weed producers, weed seed producers, can quickly overtake a field. Um, there are some weeds that are more aggressive than others. And what this all boils down to, of course, is yield loss. This field on the right here, uh, believe it or not, is a soybean field. You can see it's very much overrun with weeds. That particular weed happens to be Palmer amaranth. Um, you'll hear me mention Palmer amaranth a few times in this presentation in Minnesota. It's a, um, it's a big concern for us. It's considered a prohibited noxious weed here. It's on the eradicate list, which means we want no Palmer amaranth at all in our state. One plant is a problem. So when I talk about eliminating weed seeds and manure, Oftentimes, I'm talking to people about Palmer amaranth. So you'll see it a couple times in this presentation. And with particularly aggressive weeds, you can get high yield loss, you know, up to 91% yield loss in corn, 79% in soybean. That's in a really, really bad situation, but it can happen. And that affects the bottom line of your farm, which is what we care about in the end, right? So how do weed seeds get into the manure in the first place? So the way that we often think about weed seeds entering manure is through feed. So the, the feed is fed to animals, the animals digest it, it comes out in the manure, and that manure is spread onto the field. But there are a couple other ways too. Spilled feed, if you have animals that are messy eaters, a lot of horse people have messy horses <laughs> uh, that like to spread their feed around their, their, um, the floor of their barn, you uh, could introduce weed seeds that way. The bedding itself, it never gets eaten or digested by the animal can introduce seeds as well, or stockpiles of manure that are weedy that you know, haven't been turned or weeded or moved in a long time and they're growing weeds on their own. Those weeds of course are dispersing and ending up in the manure. So what can you do to minimize weed seeds and manure? What are some steps you can take? So first of all, don't assume that animal digestion will kill all of the seeds. Some people think that just because I feed these seeds to uh, my livestock, all the seeds are going to be destroyed. We're going to be good to go. That's not the case, it turns out. And you'll see that there's a, some differences between seed type here. So um, let's start off looking at the large, soft-coated, mostly grass weed seeds, you know, your foxtails, downy bromes, et cetera. This uh, picture here is yellow foxtail. And this study looked at feeding it to both ruminant animals, cattle in this case, and uh, poultry. And um, when I first looked at this data, I was expecting the ruminant animal to reduce seed viability the most, but actually it's the poultry. When they fed these seeds to uh, cattle, 7% of the seeds remain viable in the manure. For poultry, that was only 0.25% viable. So the gizzard in poultry does a good job of breaking down the seeds. Now, the large soft coated grass weed seeds are mostly not, at least in Minnesota, not what we are very concerned with because they're more easily to kill, they're more easily killed in um, manure, in feeding systems. It's the small, hard coated, most often broadleaf weed seeds in here. It's a lot of amaranthus species. So your pigweeds, your water hemp, palmer amaranth is also part of that. And that's that picture there is what those seeds look like. And they're um, about you know the size of a poppy seed. They really look like poppy seeds. 
And so they're easy to hide in manure. They're sneaky little seeds that get into manure. So same study, same sort of thing, fed to two different uh, digestive systems, ruminant and poultry. And here, 27% remain viable in the ruminant digestive system and 3.5% in poultry. So that's just feeding feed to animals, looking at their manure and the percent viable seeds in their manure. So animal digestion alone isn't going to solve all of your weed seed problems. It does help, but it's not going to solve all your problems. So what else can we do? In general, heat is the enemy of seed survival. We want it to be hot. How hot? Uh, you know, over 140 degrees Fahrenheit for three or more days. Now, some of those larger seeds, those grass seeds, they found as low as 102 degrees Fahrenheit was enough to kill them. But if we're looking at these smaller, hard-coated seeds, we need a little higher temperature for a little more duration. So what brings us this amount of heat uh, in siling feed? Turns out to work pretty well if it's appropriate for the feed type. And also composting manure. And we'll talk about both of these separately in a moment here. Um, what doesn't work is anaerobic digestion for these small hard seeds and deep pit manure. So if anaerobic conditions aren't really going to help you with these very deep, um, with these very sp small seeds. And you can see that's a problem if you have a liquid system, right? You know, anaerobic digestion in deep pits. That's kind of a, a liquid manure problem and composting manure that we'll talk about, you know, that's a solid manure. So your options are more limited. My light turns off if I don't wave at the, um, the motion detector every once in a while. So we have a couple more options for solid manure than we do for liquid manure. So first let's look at uh, ensiling the feed. So this study looked at two types of silage, a haylage and a corn silage. Uh, they took uh, haylage and corn silage that was contaminated with small hard coated seeds. They used uh, pigweed, in this case, red root pigweed, and they ensiled it for one month to, and looked at the seed viability at the end of this. So the haylage turned out to be 59% viable. The corn silage, 40% viable. So around 50% reduction in viability if you average those out with one month of ensiling. Now, a different group. Um, took that study and decided to just double the time. Let's just do two months of ensiling, shall we? And they only looked at corn silage. So they looked at the contaminated feed once again and found that doubling the time knocked that down to 13% viable seed. So that's quite a bit of reduction by just going from one month to two months of ensiling. And then they took it a step further and looked at two months of ensiling plus feeding that uh, silage product to ruminant animals, uh, cattle in this case. And so those two together ended up with 11% viable um, seed in the manure. So you can see that the effects aren't additive. You can't take the ruminant reduction in viability digestion percent reduction plus the ensiling reduction, they're not additive. So you end up with only a little bit better than just ensiling the feed. And then let's talk about composting manure for a minute. Uh, in our grand tool bag of things that we have to try to destroy weed seeds, this is one of the best ones we have. And I mean, we're, we're trying to just reduce risk at every point in the system here. We're trying to reduce weed seed germination and viability in our field. So all of these are just to reduce risk. None is a, is a cure-all. So we started with manure through proper composting, your small seed viability, about two to 10% viable. Uh, there's a range on that. And you'll find some studies that get these uh, small seeds down to 0% viable. And you're like, oh, that's really great. But those are often in, those are most likely in small scale greenhouse or small scale studies. In the real world, in a real farm with proper, um, or with, with stockpiles and composting, it's hard to get 0% viability. It's nigh impossible because there's always gonna be a little pocket of cooler areas. You know, manure is certainly not a homogenous product. So 2% viable, that's probably the best you can hope for with these smaller seeds. 
Now there's a very important word in this slide and it's proper, the word proper composting. Because people tell me all the time that they compost their manure, but really it's just a pile that's been sitting there for, you know, forever. And uh, so proper composting, aged manure is not composted manure. Just sitting there doesn't mean that it's properly composting. You need to do a little bit of active management with that. Composting manure properly is almost an art. You've got to get the particle size and the oxygen. And there's a whole bunch of components. For seed mortality, um, we want to compost for at least 21 days, more than 50 is preferred. If you can, you know, 21 days is a pretty quick turnaround time for most compost operations. So um, more than that is preferred. And then there, like I said, there's a lot of components in comp composting, but the two that are most important are that it's hot enough and that it's moist. You can have temperatures hot enough, but if you don't have at least 35% moisture in there, it's not gonna kill the weed seeds. So your optimal is you know 150 to 160 for four or more days. You know, you know, you don't want to get too hot because you'll start killing those beneficial microbes in the in the compost that are doing the composting process. You don't want to get too cool because then those microbes also slow down. Moisture, optimal is 50%. Um, it'll still kill weed seeds down to 35%, but 50% is good. And you can test that by grabbing a bunch of your or a handful of your compost and squeezing it. If water drips out, it's too wet. If it crumbles and blows away and becomes dust in the wind, then it's too dry. But if it kind of holds your hand shape and is a little bit moist, that's about right. So 98% reduction in viability seems great, right? So you had, you took your feed, you ensiled it, you fed it to your animal, you, you composted it, you got as much seed viability reduction as you can get with manure and your you know 98% reduction. That's great. That's fantastic. Well, not exactly when you're looking for eradication. And here is where I turn back to Palmer amaranth and which is, you know, a big deal here in Minnesota and other states. It's not just a big deal here, but we are trying to eradicate it when, there, when a plant is found. It's kind of a big deal and um, all parts of the plant, both above ground and below ground must be destroyed. Um, so 98% is a great reduction in viability, but we're going to do some daunting math and you're not going to have to do any daunting math of your own. I'll do it all for you, but let's just walk through this together. So imagine you have 70 Palmer amaranth seeds and that's 70 seeds on that dime. Um, you don't have to count them, take my word for it. And you think about how small a dime is. I mean, that's teeny tiny and there's 70 seeds on there. That's not even crowding the face of the dime. And now imagine that for a ton of manure. Oh, it would be so easy to hide those 70 seeds in a ton of manure. And so then we compost it, we've done everything right. We've got down to 2% survival, 2% viability. So that means you have about 100 or um, 1.4 seeds, one and a half seeds remain viable per ton roughly. But then if you apply that at eight tons per acre, which is you know a decent, application rate, you're introducing 11 viable seeds per acre. And then you apply it to your little quarter quarter section and suddenly you've got 440 viable seeds out there. And when we're looking to kill any Palmer amaranth out there, that's daunting. And we, we got 98% reduction, you know? So this is why my parting thought for this is always scout your fields. You know, this is, uh, we do all we can to reduce the viability of weed seeds and manure but there's always gonna be escapes. It's likely there's going to be escapes. And so scout your fields because once they're up, you can still kill them. Once again, don't ask me about herbicide mode of actions. But if you have manure that you, um, that you believe is contaminated with weed seed, you know, spread that nearby where you see all the time and you can you know, go scout it often. Um, if you were worried about Palmer amaranth, maybe spread spread it on a you know, field that you can get to every couple of weeks and walk through it and scout it really well. This chart here is a very interesting chart about the um, weed emergence and flowering compared to our cropping systems and cropping times. This is all for Minnesota. It's gonna vary widely from wherever you are. But what I want you to look at here is the green bars, the emergence period of each weed. And just notice that you know, they're all at different times. They're emerging at different times of the growing season. So you can't go out there and scout on, you know, May 6th 
be like, okay, I found these weeds. This is all I'm going to have for this season. Done. Done with it. So you need to go out there and scout regularly, scout often for, um, to, be, to be really on top of your weed control. Um, I, I know this isn't a Palmer Amaranth presentation, but I did want to add in Palmer Amaranth's emergence period. It's so long. It's, it's why Palmer is such a challenge in this state and other states too. It's because it emerges for such a long time. So you got to keep checking. You got to keep checking. 